When it comes to building a full stack app, there are typically three choices for the backend or database. There's MySQL and Postgres. They're both free to get started. But in the last video, we saw that when you deploy it, it starts to hit certain breakpoints. And of course, it becomes very expensive when you try to scale it. The third choice, of course, is MongoDB, where typically most developers love MongoDB because, of course, it's free to get started as well, but also because the ease of use. You don't have to worry about the schema before you start building your application. In fact, everything is in JSON, or you can even use an ORM, something like a Prisma, if you're using Next.js. So what tends to happen is people who start off with one of these databases then end up also getting a data lake or a data warehouse where you take all your transactional data and then move it just to run point-in-time analytics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can use single store, which is a MySQL wire protocol compatible database, but at the same time, it also works identically to MongoDB if you want to. And today we'll look at how you can do that. And with a very similar configuration that you have on MongoDB, we'll try the same queries on single source side and have the exact same format and all that. And we'll see the difference in the overall performance. So let's get started. So on the left-hand side, what we see is my MongoDB cluster. And here, when I click on edit configuration, you can see that I am running a cluster tier called M40, which has 16 gigs of RAM and 80 GB of storage. On this end side, I have the identical database, but I'm using what is called S00 on single store. And to give you an idea of what S00 is, it is very similar, except that it has fewer CPUs. So only two virtual CPUs, but you get 16 gigs of RAM, which is identical here. And the only thing I would suggest is when you're creating this workspace, just enable this button which says single store Kai, and that gives you compatibility with MongoDB APIs and an endpoint that you can connect from your app, almost identical to how you do with your Mongo. So let's take a look at now the database itself and the data set. So on this side, on the MongoDB side, if I look at the browse collections, I do see that I have this database called Kai eStore. And within here, if I look at some very high level numbers, you would start to see that categories has only six documents, orders roughly has about 2.7 million total documents. Similarly, if I go now to my single store instance, I choose the workspace group. So think of it as similar to the cluster that you have on the MongoDB side. And then if I go to the databases, I have a database, which is also called Kai eStore over here because I want to run the exact same queries. And here again, I can see very similar information. Uh, interesting to note that these are all stored as column store, which is what makes it extremely fast for analytics. But there is a copy in row store as well, which is in memory, which is why it's also very fast when it comes to transactions. Very similar to orders here, we have 2.75 million documents, ratings as 100,000, and products you would see is roughly about 10,000. All right, great. So let's say now I want to connect to this instance of Mongo, as well as this instance of Mongo compatible database on single store side. And then we want to run similar queries to see what kind of response times are we getting. So what I love to use is JetBrains, what is called a data grip. Now, before I forget, there's one other thing I'd like to add. So if you are in single store, and let's say you want the endpoint to connect this, you would typically go back to your deployments and this screen might be different for you. And when I click on the overview, I can click on connect and then say MongoDB client. And you can see this is my endpoint. 
and uh, I can copy and paste this into any MongoDB client, including Compass, or in my case, I'm using Data Grip as I showed you. And if you're not familiar with where your password is, all you have to do is go to your access, click the password, and then copy it over. And on this side, of course, it's very straightforward and similar when you go to overview, you can go and look for connect and then it gives you similar information. So now let's go into data grip and run a few queries to see how the two different instances perform. So first and foremost, if I look at the overall structure of the collections and the documents, this is very similar to an e-commerce store in the sense there might be categories. Within categories, there are products. Within products, of course, you have different attributes, but products must be could be connected to orders, which are connected to users. And every user might have a rating, which is connected to both products, as well as typically some sort of order as well. So the first query I want to run is what I would say get the top products. And the get top products is what is doing an aggregate. So think of it as in SQL, you're doing a whereas, and then you do a group, and then you look up where products equal something, you know, based on your condition, and then you group by, and then you say, hey, only show me the first 100 documents. Or if it was SQL, that would be typically, let's say, rows. So I'm gonna choose this first query and I am here inside of MongoDB. So I'll run it. And as you can see on the left-hand side of my screen, it started to run. And this is where the output is going to be generated. So it shows you that it's been about eight seconds. Now on the single store side, on the exact same data set, exact same data, I'm gonna run this query exact same query as well so no change in code no change in the format and i run it and it's done in one second and 402 milliseconds now typically if you have seen my last video within single store once you run a query it is now in memory first so there's a row based version but because it's columnar storage as well you're typically analytical queries are extremely fast. Now here, while I did this, uh, as I do this over and over again, only the first time you would see maybe a little bit over a second or maybe even two seconds. But when I run this over and over again, it's roughly about a second to 270 milliseconds. Okay, so now it looks like the overall MongoDB query also came back. Very similar result, actually identical result, not similar. And that finished in 66 seconds, so six, one minute and six seconds, versus in uh, the single source side, it is one second, I would say 1.2. So roughly about 66 times faster on a slightly smaller hardware. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is to say, show me all the trending products. Very similar, you might wanna show it in your application and this is the sort of the query you would typically run inside of your application or even in a API endpoint, which you might have created to return these queries. And maybe to do some better optimization, you're doing some sort of caching at the middleware layer, but here it's all raw. So I want you to see what happens at the database level. Here again, I'm getting trending product. So let's run this on Mongo side that started and here I'm going to run it on single store side. Single store side is already done. It's about a second and 246. And if I run it a few more times, it should be consistent. So one second and 599 milliseconds. Let's run it one more time. One second and 220 milliseconds. And here on the left hand side, MongoDB is running the query. Uh, if we click on it, we'll see that it's still spinning. And now we are up to 35, 36 seconds. And we'll see similar responses. Now, if you're building an application and 
your queries are taking just for one single user here we are not doing a multi-threaded or a parallel you know benchmark test if it takes you 60 seconds or 66 seconds then obviously from a developer perspective you want to start thinking about what are the things you can optimize for better customer experience so you start to do caching and that's where things like redis come in and you add more complications so as you can see over here this finally completed and very similar 60 seconds and another six so a total of 66 seconds versus one second into 20 milliseconds so again very similar results about 66 times faster uh, results is what we get inside of single store now i'm going to do the last one which is going to match the ratings as well so this basically says get the top product sales history sorry so this one doesn't really give me the ratings but that could be another query that you could write in the end and here i'm gonna do the exact same query as well and let's run this first on the mongo side it started to run and i'm gonna run this on single store side as well and single store side it actually finished in 642 milliseconds and uh, if i keep running it a few more times maybe you will see the exact same time or maybe slightly better and the reality is that we have a uh, single store has customers where you run this across not millions but billions of different documents and it scales horizontally to an infinite level in the sense as and when you want to add more servers into your workspace you can continue to do that you can also do auto scaling and you still get this kind of response time and mind you this is without any optimization no indexes on the both side so you are basically running very comparable thing now this query as you would see is a little bit more complicated in the sense it does a few joins it does both a lookup as well as it does a group by and it also does count so these are the places which i call aggregate functions not the aggregate functions you probably know of mongo but these are analytical functions where you do a sum average and count and so on and then you do a group and this is exactly the point where even my sql starts to fail beyond let's say 100 million rows so this finished on the left hand side we see it finished in a total of uh, one minute actually i believe it was this yeah one minute and nine seconds and 729 milliseconds also 20 rows and if i look on this side that's 398 milliseconds so here single store is actually slightly much better than the other two queries instead of 66 i believe if my math is right it's somewhere around 67x faster again with exact same data exact same code exact same um, data sets and what you can uh, typically see is that here on the left hand side it has two additional virtual cpus whereas on this side it's only two you could look at just getting a free version of single store and trying it out yourself if you're looking for the exact same data set and if you're looking for these queries in my youtube channel i'm going to put it at the bottom of the description or at the description of the video and if you have any questions feel free to add your questions or comments there thank you for watching the video